Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Chi Xiaojun with Raymond and David. Welcome Hello. Hello again, again to Crossover. Now, here is some uh, story to share with you, and this is mainly about a new uh, regulation to be released soon. Actually, this is still a draft uh, to be released by the Beijing Municipal Commission of Housing and Urban Rural Development. And this is more about uh, the, uh, the, the rental policy, if you're about to rent, rent, rent a house, say, in Beijing, the new regulation says uh, the area, the, the room, the space for each person should be no less than five square meters on average. Hmm. Uh, Which is about 50 square feet, right, roughly. 50 square feet. Slightly, slightly yeah. less. Okay. Yeah, I'm not good at that, but it's, that sounds like a small amount to me. That, that sounds small. But that doesn't sound surprising to you. <laughs> well, that means people were squeezing into even smaller, even smaller yeah. sizes. It is right happening. Now. It is yeah, happening. Yeah, so that's why, I mean, the I've government is yeah, taking yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and according to the draft regulation, and in one single room, there should be no more than two people. Uh, you cannot rent one house, one room to more than two people. But shouldn't that depend on the size of the room? Yeah. There are tiny rooms and there are huge but rooms. But in, in, in China, usually, you know, even the master bedroom is not that big. Not that big, yeah. yeah. Uh, unless, uh, unless if it is the case with the uh, couple with the child, then that means three people are allowed to live in, uh, in, in that one single room. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is uh, happening? Uh, why do you think the, uh, the government, they're trying to introduce a policy like that? I think, you know, the obvious reason I can think of is for security. You know, if there's anything, hap anything bad happens, like a fire or something, it, it, it's, it's easier to, to escape uh, from that scene. Because uh, we've all heard stories that a lot of tenants, mostly migrant workers, they try to squeeze into one small unit, say in the basement. Uh, that's designed, say, for four people, and there are, say, 12 people living there. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to save money that way, but it's not, simply not safe. And from the government's point of view, I think safety is the most important thing. There's other, another factor, too. When I was uh, a couple, maybe four or five years ago, I was going on looking for houses with my wife, and so a real estate agent showed us this, this house. He said, there's people living there now, but you can look at it. And we went in there, and the first thing I noticed that that there was like women's articles of clothing hanging all over the place. And we came in and we looked and it was a, a large uh, house, like a three bedroom apartment. But there were, I think 10 or 11 women living there. So it's two like or three or four per room, sharing the bathroom and everything and living on, sleeping on the floor even. So they were, you know, pooling their resources. Mm. And it, it occurred to me then, I think another reason besides safety is because those buildings are built uh, with the infrastructure and everything in mind for a certain number of people at each floor in each building. Mm. And that includes the use of the plumbing, of the water pipes, of electricity, the stairwell, even just the, the carpet. And, the, and if you have twice as many or three times as many people that are supposed mm. to be there, mm. then the building gets, gets degraded much quicker. The, 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 the facilities and everything get used mm. much more than they're supposed mm. to be used. It's a strain on the building. The property value goes down. Mm. It's not good for the real estate market. It's not good for safety. It's a lot of different reasons. Now, Raymond, you mentioned uh, earlier uh, this is happening because uh, you know uh, obviously the cases are these houses or these single rooms are being rented out to more people. Uh, the average space they occupy should be could be much less than that five square meters. In what cases uh, is this happening? Well, I, I think mostly in the case of migrant workers who, who mm. have a very limited <coughs> budget yeah. and they need to find jobs in big cities like Beijing where housing is very, very expensive. Mm. So they cannot honestly rent a one-bedroom apartment, say for one person or even for two people. Mm -hmm. So they, they need to share that cost. And even for white-collar people like, you know, uh, uh, fresh graduates from college, who are still searching for jobs, mm. and they 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 they, they still need to uh, find something that they can afford, right? Even if they have a job at a CBD with a big company, but they are making say two thousand or three thousand yuan a month, and they can only afford something like one thousand for um, the monthly right. rental fee. Mm. And in that case, they they need to share that cost. And the only way they can do it is by squeezing more people. Mm. 
her yeah, you're, you're talking about what they used to the, the call the group, it Yi uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah, the, the Ants tribe. The Ant tribe. Mm. Yeah. Now, I've seen photos of them, yes. you know, like, as you say, a small mm. room with five or six people living in there. And sometimes, you know, someone sleeps on the, on the dining room table at night. <laughs> you know, so they're using every bit of mm. space to sleep. Mm. And, yeah, that's exactly what you're but saying. But the, there are different ways of solving that. The easiest way is to, say, rent a three-bedroom apartment, right? Put, say, two people in each room, right? And then you, you, you put four people in the living room, which is usually larger. But there are even more complicated ways by partitioning even yes. the living room right. and making the bedrooms much smaller. Mm. And so, that way, they, I mean, the, the renter can usually make, is the renter or the yeah, rentee? The, the renter can the make landlord, more, the landlord. The landlord, the landlord can make much more money that way. Exactly, I mean, as you are mentioning, and there is the need, because, you know, we have these migrant workers, we have these new graduates, right. these, uh, what we say, the, 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 ant, the people. Ant, ant, ant people. Ant tribe. Ant tribe. Uh, they are not making that much money, because uh, they're only, only starting uh, they, they cannot afford to live in the city center. They might have to live in, in a place where they have to share the room with other fellow ant people. <laughs> and at the same time, from the perspective of these landlords, they would love to convert their two-bedroom houses or three-bedroom houses into a place where they can accommodate like 20, 30 people. They, they want to maximize their profit. Mm. That's right. And the, the market is there for, say, renters who can pay a little bit of money, right? If someone, if the, you know, there comes one rich guy who wants to rent a big unit and pay a lot of money, of course, it's even better for the, for the landlord. And this is the picture, just to give you a, a, a rough idea of what the situation is. And, and I guess the original layout is not like this. It's been, you know, divided into right. these mini mini rooms. That's what Raymond was talking about, yeah. was partitioning it the, like that. The, yeah. The, yeah, the repartitioning. <laughs> yeah. So it can, uh, uh, one unit can accommodate so many more people. And so we're still seeing these individual, say, cases, individual boxes, and in some even worse cases, you have to uh, share those little boxes with even more people, with mm. those the double-deckers. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there are accusations uh, among the uh, netizens that this policy is discriminatory. It's against poor people who yeah. cannot afford big places and to, to drive away the, the people at the bottom of society. Right. That's but, a fair observation. Yeah, it's a fair observation, but I feel that really, whether you are rich or poor, safety is the most important thing. And if something bad happens, people will blame the government if the government does not take you know, mm. actions, prior actions to prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. This is still a draft, but when this is put into effect, what will happen then? Well, obviously, some of these poor migrant workers and these people have will, to leave. will suddenly not be able to find cheap enough. The, rent, the rental price is, is about to go up. Yes. It's great for the landlords, but it's not so great for the people. Do who you are think looking. this is uh, likely to be good? Well, it's not really great for the landlord. The landlord really doesn't care. If the landlord buys the uh, apartment, for investment, not for self-use. They don't really care how squalid the I condition is. I, I, I disagree. They, they, they just want to make as much money no, as I possible. No, I, I disagree because when you have uh, 10 people living in a room mm. in an, an apartment that's only supposed to hold, hold three or two, then the, the department, the value of the apartment goes down. Mm. The walls get dirty, everything gets used very, so that your, your, your property goes down. Well, they, they are just looking at short term. They, they are not really, you know, <laughs> seeing this. 10 years or yeah, 20 they, years. Yeah, they usually buy this kind of a units. They don't plan in, to live there ever. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't, they just, you know, the convenient location and where they can make the fastest oh, money. Okay. Yeah. Take a look at this picture. And a scene like this is not rare, actually, with uh, the service sector, say, because mm. they employ lots of people. Yes. Like and restaurants, yeah. Yeah, and the, these restaurants, the service mm -hmm. sector, they tend to provide the free accommodation, but when we say free accommodation, it could be something yes, like this. Yes, exactly. It looks more like a dormitory. I was going to say, it looks like the Peking University dorms I used to see when I, when I was well, there. The, the, the college dormitories yeah. nowadays are much better now. Yeah, but, yeah. Right? right. You know, with uh, con air conditioning, heating. But uh, you'll have to pay for that. And with these free accommodation, uh, I mean, it's included yeah. in your package, overall package. Yeah, it's subsidized because uh, the, 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 employ the employer will obviously take into account the cost, mm. right? In some, 
So yeah. this is the so we're looking at the places where when you go into a restaurant in a hotel or something you see the the, the waitresses and waiters. Yes. Mm. This is what they live in when they, they get could off be work. living in a place like this. in a basement of yes. the hotel. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and for even as as Raymond mentioned, for even some white collar people, and because um, you know they're still young, their salaries might not be that high. Uh, they could also be living in a place like this, and they can't afford to rent a a, a room and an individual room. They might be only able to rent a a bed. Say, you know, this is my bed. This mm -hmm. is my only space. Well, if they do. want to live closer to where they work, they they work. Uh, otherwise, they have to really, uh, you know, shuttle for 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 an hour to uh, right. every day, right? To to go to the suburb where mm -hmm. they can probably with the same money get a, a decent place. You're watching crossover. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Crossover, and today we're talking about this possible new rental policy to be introduced by the uh, municipal government. And this is still a draft, but, uh, you know, lots of people who are now living and working in Beijing, they are very much concerned about this new policy. Uh, they could be the ones who are now renting a, 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 a house, or the landlords, because mm -hmm. this new policy, when they're put into effect, it's going to... Uh, affect all these uh, house renters and also these landlords, especially for the for these young people. Do you think this is um, feasible to have a policy like this? I think, from the standpoint of uh, of security, safety, yeah, it makes makes sense. Well, but uh, the government should obviously should not meddle with pricing, right? That's determined by the market. Mm. You're saying it could be necessary. But do you think this is feasible? Uh, well, uh, if the government wants to do something, I think it can be done. You know, can make uh, conduct random inspection, uh, check all those uh, uh, landlords, and to see whether they are conforming to the new regulation. Uh, it's you know, fire hazard is obviously the biggest. But the threat. thing is, I mean, if the government is more concerned about this security issue, then possibly they can just introduce. You know, new policies concerning that aspect of the uh, of, of the market. Why do you think it is necessary for the government to introduce this policy, say five square meters for one person? Well, I thought one of Raymond's point was that is one of the reasons yes. for it. Mm -hmm. That's they 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 don't have to give all their reasons for the policy, but that's one of the reasons: is security, safety, building safety. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but. Since the need is there, you can't really say, hey, you, you're not allowed to live here because you can't well, afford to, here's the thing. to rent five square meters. Yeah, here's the thing. I, <clears throat> I agree with Raymond that they don't want to start uh, tinkering with the property, with the prices. Mm. But uh, there's two things to consider. One is you talk about the migrant workers. The migrant workers is actually important to the Beijing economy. And so you, you can't uh, suddenly uh, have a whole group of people who need to live here, to work here, who suddenly can't afford... To, to live anywhere near Beijing, because that hurts the, the workforce and also hurts those people. And uh, you risk a lot of social unrest because they might get angry or take to the street. You know, you're robbing us of our, our, our livelihood. And at the same token, Beijing would lose some of its cheap workforce. But th there's two things. One is that uh, because of various reasons we know, we've talked about in this show before, mm. that the migrant workers are slowly coming less and less to Beijing and the bigger cities. They're going to the second tier cities. They're staying home very often nowadays mm. instead of flocking to Beijing. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that, that some places there, the solution is they're building, uh, the government is building some cheap housing mm. uh, in special areas to put those people who have the cheap housing needs. But that's Which, for, for local residents. Not, it's for, it's, it's it is yeah. for local residents. It's yeah. not for temporary. But I mean, some of these white collar people mm -hmm. you're talking about are, are local. I mean, I mean, no, they're not considered local unless really? they 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 already you know have resident permit. Well, I'm talking about the like mm -hmm. the, the people who graduated from you know the, the universities, but they can't find a job close to the. I mean, can't find a home close. Well, to Well, in the, the Chinese city. sense, they're not considered residents. Yeah. Okay. At all. Well, anyway. Uh, Still, I mean, some of this problem is, is going to at least be some local people, yes. right? And so that some cheap housing would, would solve it. Mm. So it's a sort of a situation, I think, it's sort of solving itself because of demographic reasons that some of these groups are not moving as much to the bigger cities. 
But, if, but I agree that if the government simply makes this ruling, there's suddenly going to be a lot of people who can no longer find cheap housing, and it's going to be a problem. Well, I think that's exactly what the uh, Beijing municipal government wants, because uh, uh, the obvious effect, as we have seen in the past year, is to driving away the entrepreneurs, the, the small entrepreneurs, the, the kind of people who, say, open a barbershop, open a very small restaurant, uh, because people who work for the service industry per se, they usually are provided for, the, you know, those uh, mm -hmm. uh, dormitory-style living places. And if the, the inspectors are going to crack down, they are going to ask the employers, right, rather That's than right. The, the landlords. Right. But uh, <coughs> in the case of people who find their own housing, you know, usually a mom and pop shop from Guilin, from Guangxi, uh, Guangxi uh, and Province. other provinces, right, smaller provinces, and they w want to make a little money, like you know, uh, a family making five thousand or six thousand yuan uh, a month. Those people really need to rent, and for them, the rental cost goes up, and mm. they cannot afford. They, they, you know, their, their income cannot increase right. with it. That's right. So they, their decision is to leave the city. Mm. And I've, I've seen so many small shops close down in the past year. So this is, it is about this uh, rental policy, but it's more about, say, the restructuring of, say, the economic exactly. map. Of yes, the whole exactly. City. It's exactly. tied with that. That's it's what it tied is. With that. Yeah, I think and so it's too. also, I think, it's the overall policy of how to manage the city. That's right. But don't, yeah. you th but don't you think this is unfair, say, to these young people? Well, nothing is fair. Really. <laughs> nothing is fair. Uh, it's, you know, it's very costly to come and even to find a job in Beijing. Mm. And I think this policy will drive up the price, uh, drive up that cost further. So it will make most young men or women, you know, hesitate and think twice before they try to get to Beijing, to mm -hmm. settle down in Beijing, mm -hmm. yeah. or Shanghai, or any of the big cities. So what about these you know, restaurants? They are going to hire people anyway. Where do they stay? That's the dilemma. I feel that uh, when the government makes this policy, they are not taking into account that even if Beijing becomes this very advanced and very rich city, but you still need people who are deliver your pizza, who will do the kind of things to make just 1,500 yuan a month. And where to put them? Do you, do you need to transfer them to Hebei province for each <laughs> night? That's something that I think the policymakers and the regulators need to think through, yeah. right? Because there's always, there will always be a class of people who will make very little money, even in the richest place. You're watching Crossover, and today we're talking about this new rental policy to be introduced in Beijing. We'll continue our discussion after a short break. You're watching Crossover. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Crossover. And today we're talking about this possible new rental policy to, uh, to be introduced in Beijing. Uh, five square meters on average for each person. If you share a room, share a rental room with others. Now, it seems this is, to some people, this is going too fast. If you are talking about this, 20 people, 40 people sharing one room, it's not something that we can accept, accept by the government out of security concerns. What about this? We do it step by step. 40 people? No. What about 10 people then? <laughs> mm. uh, people would live in a more comfortable place, you know. Uh, the security can't be controlled. Everything is under control. Why, why, why do we have to say, hey, one step? 40 people to two people. Well, I think you, you have a point that this kind of policy should be phased in, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There's another thing which is, you know, the, the traditional free market explanation for all of this is, you know, we need to move in this direction. Uh, we can't have people crammed into smaller and smaller spaces. Mm -hmm. It gets into this sort of uh, third world ghetto kind of mentality where lots of people and families crammed in one room and this kind of thing. But what, but what they're saying is if we pass something like this now and, and gradually phase it in, that the market will take care of all of this. So in, in other words, when you're, uh, this partitioning that you're talking about, you can do that on the fly by just kind of putting up boards or something in an ad hoc way. Or you can actually get a carpenter and, and you know, workers in there and like redo the buildings. So you can restructure the, the whole apartment, mm -hmm. the number of rooms. Or, or new apartments can be built uh, according to new space configurations, because mm -hmm. depending on. So this is something that would take place over many years with landlords ad adapting their living space, renters le se seeking different kinds of spaces. But the market would sort it out with the money. But there would be a period, supposedly, for the first few years of adjustment 
where there'd be some losers, where some people would lose, mm. and those would be the people you're talking about. Mm. You say it's unfair. Raymond said it. There's, you know, yeah. nothing is fair, and the people who usually lose out are, the, are these the lower class, lower strata of society. Mm. It's too bad. But yes, for the short term, these people would lose out. Hopefully, if it's done right, then then it could alleviate this problem, and it could be safe with a better living conditions, and gradually within 10 years, everything would come back to normal, hopefully. But, but still, I think uh, the government is right in not leaving everything to the market, because, because if you leave everything to the market, it will, there will be clusters of slums, slums everywhere in big cities, unpreferable of cities. And here in China, we do have our equivalent of slums. We call it urban villages, Chen mm. Zhongchun, mm. and those are usually the places that the old residents of the city live. And they used to own a lot of properties, mm -hmm. and they were the first one to convert their properties into uh, small high rises, usually like five, six stories without elevators and mm -hmm. everything. And they built it so dense, so densely that no fire engine can drive into the villages. And when uh, uh, Western Help was consulted to solve this problem, and the experts came and they they say this is a way of life. This is their lifestyle because people play mahjong and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the Chinese, this is an eyesore. They, they, they definitely want to get rid of that kind of living conditions. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's potential danger uh, mm -hmm. in there. Well, that's for, for say, the, uh, the skyline of the city. I mean, this is a decision to a large extent made by the city councils. Uh, they want to remove these you know, bad part of these city pictures right. from the whole picture, so just to make sure mm. everything looks well. But the thing is, we have to consider the needs of these uh, people living, fighting for a life here in the city. So what about this? And for these fresh, fresh graduates, they're not rich, they're poor people, because they don't have an income at the time, because wh where do they go? I mean, uh, these days, what's happening uh, now for these fresh graduates, they would uh, find a place, for, for find just a bed, yeah. or share a room with lots of people, that, but at least they have a place to live in. Yeah. And at the same time, they'll try their luck. So w what's going to happen when a policy like this is to be introduced? What's going to happen to them then? Well, I don't know whether this, this is going to ap apply to the suburbs. Because right now, a lot of those people, young people searching for jobs, are living on the peripherals of the city, right. where there are large clusters of vi literally villages, mm. and they are not very well regulated, and uh, they can basically pay very little for this, for the rent. This gets into we, we've talked about this on previous shows. Mm. Raymond and I talked about the old city of Beijing and and the decision of of how to build grow Beijing. Mm -hmm. and now it's coming back to bite yes. us now. I say us, them. I mean, I wasn't here when they made the decision, but, <laughs> but the idea is that, you know, uh, there's, there's these CBDs, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the central, central business, central business district. districts, district. right? Yeah. And so uh, the problem with these satellite communities where people live is that these, they get further and further yes. out, and so they have to go into where the work they is. Still work in the they're still working in these If Beijing had started from the beginning to, to make a decision to move some of these industrial areas out to the west or some other parts of Beijing, mm. then you would have these pockets of industrialized area, and it wouldn't be so hard to commute. The city wouldn't be the center for mm. everything. I think what's happening now, I think is inevitable, is going to happen, is you're going to start to get some satellite uh, some communities and some suburbs that will become like mini CBDs, but they won't be in the center. They'll be satellite mm, CBDs. Mm. It's also it's already happening in places like Tongzhou and yes. places like Changping and these yes. places because there's so many people out there now that the commerce grows out there. That's right. So what will happen eventually in 10, 20 years is that Beijing will not be this hub with lots of communities. Mm. It'll be lots of uh, metropolitan areas with their own economies and their own big well, that, That's the service industry. Uh, uh, the CBDs mostly attract those big companies, right, mm, yeah. for white collar jobs. And, and I think there's this deficiency in the planning, especially yes. in the idea that they want to aggregate all those big companies in one, one district, place, right. in one place, in an age where, where everyone has access to the internet and everything. It's really unnecessary. If you spread those companies around, it can enrich every district and solve most of the problems but of commuting and of housing. I think that will happen, though, because the CBDs in Beijing are already at saturation point. You, there's no place to build new buildings. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, by the CCTV tower in the, that area in Guomao and everything, there's, there's no room to build any new buildings. All or, skyscrapers. Yeah. That, I mean, this could 
this could be the future prospect we, we might expect to see, you know, with the development of the, uh, of the city. But what's going to happen right now is, I mean, to solve the issue, the living problem, there, there used to be a very innovative idea of uh, building up those capsule hotels <laughs> or capsule... Bed, uh, yeah, capsule, I, I don't know what... Uh, living rooms, say. Well, it's, it's basically something that contains the bed. And so, everything. Yeah, these are the pictures showing uh, how it looked like. That was the original idea. Say, uh, these rooms are now being converted into these, well, still cages, but the capsules. It was yeah. started by a retiree. And later on, only because, you know, this idea contradicts uh, the regulations. It obviously, the violence the policies. size of the. Yeah. Uh, you know. Once again, something related to this five square meters yeah. per person. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, a nightmare. It's like a science fiction <laughs> dystopia. Yeah. And that, I mean, people living in cages. Yeah. It doesn't look good, but it solves the problems, the exact problems that. It's affordable you know, to them. It is it's affordable. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. The, sat the sanitary condition, it's acceptable if you take a look at these pictures. Slightly better than uh, some of the ill-managed dormitories. But do you think, Raymond, this could be a direction <laughs> you might be working on? No, I, I think this is just a transitory thing. Yeah. Yeah, a period that you go through <coughs> yeah. when you develop your economy and raise <coughs> your living standard. Mm, mm. Uh, obviously, it cannot be sustainable. But this is the practice that we've talked about and we've seen before being popular in countries like Japan. Mm -hmm. They have. They, they yeah. started actually this practice of those right. capsule hotels. So is the point of this just a cheaper accommodation temporarily? These are not people. Who, this, they don't live here, right? No. Just, these are hotels. Yeah, these are hotels. They, they're so. probably just, you know, if you, take, you need to take a nap for yeah. two hours yeah. or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. There are also cases, uh, there are permanent residents actually with these. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Yeah. well, in Hong Kong, they used to have this cage that's right. Man, that's with right. a very lower class uh, that cannot afford anything. Yeah. And the government pays for everything, and each, it's like a dormitory, but they build these wires. So, like cages, uh, they call it's, them. It's yeah. basically, it looks like a cage. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm only thinking whether there is a way out, a, a solution for these low income earners. And um, basically, they, you can't really say you are not allowed to live. Yeah, you cannot say that. In the city, I mean, whatever language you're using, I mean, if a policy like this is being introduced, virtually you're saying go back to wherever you come from, or second tier or third tier places. Well, the, the government is not saying that. It's basically, you know, nudging them in that direction. Right. But at the same time, I think the government has, the central government has realized the importance of this.